Greetings, learners. We are now taking another lesson on climate and weather again, particularly mid-latitude cyclones. But we are focusing on the concepts, the ideas that you must master if you want to be an expert on mid-latitude cyclones. Please take your pen and paper, because at the end of the lesson, we are going to be doing an exercise that I'm going to be patient with, and we take our time just to make sure we've got the concepts right. So please bring your pen and paper and get ready. Let us start. There you are. We will start with the warm front, okay? Now, remember that the warm front is called a warm front because it is pushed by warm air. By warm air. That's the reason. So the warm front in this case is that red line there. That's your warm front, okay? Pushed by warm air. There's warm air behind the warm front advancing, okay? Advancing. Meaning it is the warm air that pushes the warm front. Hence it is called a warm front. Now, ahead of the warm front will be cold air that recedes, that recedes, okay? That recedes. Let's get the eraser so that we can be able to clear the stage and be able to get more that we can get here, okay? Now, what is happening is the view that you are having here is the view of a cross-section, meaning a side view. You are seeing the warm front from the side. Here we have, we have here a symbol or symbols that are called half moons. Those symbols are used in a synoptic weather map. So if you are asked to draw a cross section by the examiner, you must have a clear line like we have here, like we have there without the symbols, because that clear line is in a cross-section, but not in a synoptic weather map, okay? Now, remember, the direction of movement of the cyclone is from west to east. Just to expatiate on that, always remember, somewhere at the back of your mind, there's always going to be a question that says, why, or account for, or explain this movement of west to east, okay, of west to east. And you're going to be saying they are found in the western wind belt, or you can say they are carried by the westerlies, okay? Now, this cold air that you see here means this part is the cold sector, and this part here, because it has got warm air, it is called the warm sector, okay? Now let's take the next one. That is the cold front or that is the cross-section of the cold front. I always say this is a master drawing. Wherever there is cold air that meets warm air, this is going to be what is happening. So in this case, this is the cold front, okay? Cold front. Why are we calling it a cold front? Because this front here is pushed by cold air advancing cold air behind the cold front. So it is called a cold front because it is pushed by cold air. It is pushed by cold air. Now, in front of the cold front is the warm sector because it's got warm air. There it is, warm air, okay? Now, the cold air is heavy. It's got a higher molecular density is more aggressive and moves faster. These are the properties of cold air. What does it do then? It wedges itself under warm air, forcing the warm air to rise. That rising is called uplifting, or you can call convection current. We say uplifting because it does not rise on its own accord. It is lifted, it is forced to by the cold air 
that is behind the cold front. Now, this uplifting leads to the development of heavy cloud cover. You can make a mention of cumulonimbus clouds. Those are the only clouds we refer to as heavy cloud cover. Cumulonimbus clouds. Cumulo, Latin, means a heap of. Nimbus, Latin, means rainfall. So these are rain-carrying clouds. Cumulo nimbus clouds. Obviously, we are going to get heavy precipitation here, okay, on the eastern side, and a possibility of thunderstorms and even lightning, okay? So if you can master that one as a cross-section of the cold front, you are on your way. Now, we were breaking these two up and analyzing the concepts, but on the first one, we spoke about map symbols. Now, we are going to be talking about map symbols on the second one, too. Look at that. Those are called triangles, okay? The triangles that you see will have a color. The color is blue because that is the code that we use for cold air. And we use red here as the code, as the code for warm air. Now, those symbols are meant to be used on a synoptic weather map, not on a cross-section. So if you use those symbols on a cross-section, we are not going to give you marks in the exams. So you must know that this is a cross-section. This is a map. You use different skills to get the good marks for both. Now let's go back to our slide. Now we are putting the two together. And I'm sure, learners, you are familiar with that now because most of you have attempted this from the left to the right side all the way. But remember, the missing labels that you don't have here, you can always put in. For example, cold sector, warm sector, cold sector, okay? You can insert cloud cover there, okay? You can insert a uh, rainfall, maybe a symbol, or maybe you can do the conventional way that everybody will understand, okay? Thunderstorms and lightning, okay? Here you'll have light cloud cover, you can see that? So you can have cumulus clouds, okay? You can have zero stratus clouds, all the light clouds, that you can do as examples. Please make sure you are familiar with them, okay? Now, let us take this one. You have done the lower part already, okay? You have done the lower part already, but I want to introduce you now to the concepts that we're doing versus what you can be asked on in the exams, okay? Here is a plan view, meaning you are seeing the mid-latitude cyclone from top, okay? A plan view. You are seeing it from top. You are seeing it as you would see it on a synoptic chart or on a synoptic map, okay? So the examiner often has a question that wants you to draw a cross-section of a mature mid-latitude cyclone. This is now an example of the mature stage, of the mature stage, the mature stage of a mid latitude cyclone. So you have to be able to draw a cross section along that dotted line. Maybe let's make it from C to D, because A to B is there already, okay? Now, we will start here, C, and take it all the way to D. So that's how your cross section should look like, okay? You see the cold air, which is now the cold sector, they're coming in, there's the heavy cloud cover, okay? Precipitation, don't forget to put in thunderstorms and lightning. That is the warm sector, okay? This is the cold sector, and that is the warm front, okay? And this is the cold front. You can see everything seems to fall into place. Seems to fall into place. You've got to be able to do that drawing in all, okay? Now let's take it further. Please bring your pens and your pencils closer. We are going to be doing an exercise. I will take the top part and bring it down here. A totally different drawing, but very, very close to what we have had before. Draw me the earth surface, as you can see there, the brown line, okay? Uh, 10 seconds, if we can do it. And also note A to B, meaning you'll have your A there. Let me, let me get my pen. Have your A there, 
and your B there, okay? And put your A to B, meaning from the left to the right, okay? From A, as you see here, to B, as you see here. Transpose that and have it along the brown line, that brown line representing your earth surface. Now, what do we do, learners? Because I know you are ready. Know you are ready now. Please draw me the position of the cold front. Draw me the position of the cold front, okay? On the synoptic weather chart, that is the cold front, okay? That is the cold front. So draw for me along the brown line from A to B, on the earth surface from A to B, okay? All of us done? Your exercise should look like this by now, okay? That's what you should be having by now. And label it, and label it cold front, preferably in full, preferably in full if you can, the cold front, okay? What do we do next? Please show me arrows that show the air behind the cold front and label the air, okay? Let me repeat. Show me the air behind the cold front and label it. There's something I want to make sure you have grasped when we talk about the concepts, okay? Let's see, let's see how it goes. I know you have inserted your arrows now. There we go, there we go. There is your direction. I don't mind you having them straight, okay? I don't mind you having them straight, not at all. But remember, cold air is heavier, higher molecular density, and is behind the cold front. So label it, that is cold air, moving aggressively behind the cold front, okay? Now we're moving nicely. Do something else. Show me the air ahead of the cold front. Tip warm air. Sh give me the arrows. Show me how it moves. Okay? Two seconds, three seconds, maybe four. Who knows? You are done. Okay? If your exercise is good, that's what I'm going to be seeing. And you can label that warm, warm air rising. Okay? Rising. There's the arrow. Rising, okay? Let's go. Show me the condensation and the type of cloud cover, okay? Show me the condensation and the cloud type of cloud cover. Quickly, I think we are done now. If you have done well, that's what is supposed to happen. And you show me also the precipitation. There we go. Now, what I want to stress here is that these are cumulonimbus clouds. They are clouds of vertical extent. So make sure your clouds rise high. You are showing me clouds of vertical extent. They rise high, okay? And there's precipitation. If you are a skilled learner, make sure you also show me that there'll be thunderstorms and lightning, okay? Now your drawing will be as good as complete because we are now here. We are done with this side. Perfect, okay? Perhaps what we can do, because we are moving, remember the question is through A, B. You can also label this one as the warm sector, because it's got warm air, okay? Now let's move. Show me the position of the warm front. Show me the position of the warm front. We're going together. Show me the position of the warm front, okay? Now I, I hope you are done by now. Let's go. There's the warm front. There's the warm front and you can label it warm front. Remember, learners, there must be a difference in the gradient that you show us. Let us see. Look at the warm front. It's got a gentle gradient. But the cold front has got a steep gradient. There's the steep gradient. Let me do it again. There's the steep gradient. There's the gentle gradient. That difference must be visible for everybody to see. Don't leave me doubting if you know the difference between the two in terms of the gradient, okay? For purposes of your development, know that there is a reason why the cold front is steeper and the warm front is gentle, okay? We'll deal with that in another lesson on another day. I want to stress on concepts today, okay? Show me the movement of air behind the warm front, meaning the warm air that pushes the warm front. Put the arrows and label the air. Remember, 
we are still in the warm sector. Okay? We're still in the warm sector. I hope your arrows are done by now. Let's see. They're supposed to look like that. There we go. Now you can see the arrows are red, meaning warm air. Okay? And you can see that they are gliding along because warm air is lighter, has got a lower molecular density, and is going to be rising also convectionally but slower. Okay? Now, give me the type of condensation and cloud cover that you will find there. Okay? Just draw quickly and have it there. Just draw quickly and have it there. Meanwhile, I'll erase so that we can be able to have some space. Okay? There we go. I think we are ready now. I hope we are ready with the cloud cover. Let's see. That's the way it goes. Now, we are showing precipitation here. But this is now going to be light rain, okay? Why? Because the cloud cover is also light. If you compare the cloud cover that we have, let me change the color of my pen. If you compare the cloud cover that we have on this side with the cloud cover that we have here, along the cold front to be heavy cloud cover, but along the warm front to be light clouds. So light clouds, produce light rainfall. And you can even give examples, like drizzle, okay? Like drizzle. You can even give examples, like drizzle, okay? Now let's see. Again, you can add on the labels, because you are now wiser than before. What labels can you have? Remember here you had the warm sector? Here we had the warm sector, so you can have the cold sector here. And you can also come up again with the cold sector there. So please practice how to draw. Because what we are discovering when we mark your papers is that our learners are not very good at drawing, draw, drawing diagrams. They often rely on PowerPoint presentations. They watch and they also assume that they understand by just watching. Geography needs you to knuckle down and do the work yourself. Thank you very much, learners. We are now at the end of our lesson. We are focusing on mid-latitude cyclones, focusing on concepts. And I hope you are now familiar with them and you are going to develop yourself further and integrate, interwave the concepts with others so that you've got a bigger picture and you understand comprehensively what the weather systems called mid-latitude cyclones are. Thank you very much for attending the lesson. Remember, the warmer your blankets, the colder the future.